All right, Dave Ellswick Show, KARN. Let's talk to one of the guys I really like because I think he's been hitting it out of the ballpark. That's the majority leader uh, over at the state capitol for the, the state House of Representatives. And uh, Bruce Westerman joins us here on the Dave Ellswick Show. And, and Bruce, you know, I didn't like that uh, they voted to throw all that money. I didn't like that they uh, didn't back you up on trying to get $20 million of it out of gift. Uh, money, you know, the general improvement fund uh, that the governor has. But I do have to say, I I want to pat you on the back specifically uh, on uh, stopping uh, that URT. Yeah, Dave, it's good to be on your your show today. And that was a big issue going into the, the session, in my opinion. It was an unrelated issue. I think that, in everybody's opinion, it was an unrelated issue that uh, the governor just threw in there at the last minute to have in with the mix on the teacher insurance. But uh, that was a serious issue that would have set a new precedence where the state would have been able to take local property tax money and put it into state funds. And I think that's a, an area we didn't need to go, and I'm, I'm very glad that the House Education Committee tabled that motion and, and didn't bring it back up. I mean, that that really was something that you don't even want to crack the door on, right? No, you don't want to give a you know you don't even want to give a centimeter on that one to to let the state start getting their hands on property tax money. And the governor even came out in the paper and said, you know, property tax just like sales tax. So when you start hearing wow. people talk like that, you need to get uh, <laughs> need to get real suspicious of what they're saying and what their uh, what their motives are. If you could do this for my listeners, I'd appreciate it. Explain to them why these eight school districts were different than every other school district. Well, the the funding formula, and everybody's probably heard the term adequacy funding, and it basically says that every school in the state will get at least sixty three hundred dollars per student. Uh, so that money is made up by property taxes or with general revenues, which are income tax and sales taxes. So, say you take the property tax collected in your school district and divide it by the number of students, and it comes out to $2,000 per student. Well, the state puts in $4,300 more to make up that difference in adequacy funding. And that number varies all across the state with different property values and the different amount of students in each school. These eight schools, when they take the property taxes they collect and divide by the number of students, the numbers come out above the approximately $6,300 number that the state says is, is the adequacy funding. What the governor wanted to do was to take that money above the 6300 which he's calling excess money, and bring it back in, and it would end up in the state coffers is where it would end up being because it wouldn't change the formula for the other schools. So it would just offset general revenues that were going to the other schools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of, and, a, kind of a Robin Hood type thing. Very much a Robin Hood type thing. And, you know, never, never before have local property taxes not gone back into the school districts where they were collected. All right. W- with, with that said, you know, what, what are they going to do now? They're getting rid of this committee, right, that was running this. They're they're all fired. Is that correct? Right. Now, when you start talking about the teacher insurance issue, there were uh, there were certain reforms that could be done on the short term, and then there are more reforms that will have to be done down the road. And when I first heard about this issue of us putting in $43 million more to uh, make the teacher insurance sound, I was very suspicious of it. But when you look at the the details and what all was going on, this is a state-run system that the state is on the hook for. So if the rates go up high enough, the, the, the healthy teachers and school employees start dropping out of the plan, the only ones that will be left in it are the ones who are running up the bills anyhow. Mm-hmm. So your, your cost won't go down significantly, but the amount of uh, money going into the plan out from the participants would go down dramatically. So the state would be on the hook for those costs one way or the other, but if you could keep more participants in the plan, then in the long run it would make it more economical for the state. So to me it came down to more as a business decision for the state uh, to try to keep the participants in the plan rather than having a bunch of them drop out of the plan and the cost of the state be even more than $43 million. So in 2015, I... I'm going to assume you will not be there. You'll be up in in somewhere in Washington D.C., uh, you know, serving the constituency probably in in District Four. But 
I, I, I got to ask this question. Uh, it, it, are people's thoughts to go out and find an insurance company that will do the insurance for the state so that all the teachers will be under it where it's cost effective or fold them into what the insurance is that all the state employees have that would drive even those costs down lower? I mean, instead of having this, you know, we're going to finance our own health insurance plan? Well, that's what the, the, the legislation that was passed last week did uh, basically four things. It got rid of the board, the, em, the Employee Benefits Division Board that's part of the Department of Finance and Administration right. under the executive branch. It it wipes that board out and will reappoint that board with expert with people with expertise in the insurance uh, business. Uh, that was why I pushed to put the take the twenty million dollars of existing appropriated funds out of the governor's general improvement fund uh, because I thought it was the the program had been mismanaged by the executive branch and the executive branch should have had more skin in the game or had some skin in the game at least the the way it is now. Uh, that $43 million came out of surplus. So the, the legislation got rid of that board. It also set up the health savings accounts to make the bronze plans and the silver plan more attractive, and it put a deductible on the gold plan. Um, so those were the short-term things that we could do because of the time constraints when these uh, participants had to sign back up for the insurance.